Hello, everyone. I know it's our last class. We're all very, very tired. We're exhausted. And so am I. But uh, this is our last one. Let's fight. Let's get it out. All right? Let's, let's end on a good note. All right. Welcome to the Poly Workshop. My name is Alejandro Hernandez. And I currently work for Mokdong Magnet School. Okay? Now I'm going to go over today's agenda. Okay? The first thing we're going to talk about is discuss the basic principles about teaching reading at Poly followed by explaining the components of reading, why this is important for the students. Okay, also, apply methods to approach reading through practice. Now, we're going to differentiate comprehension questions and also wrap it up with group practice. If you have enough time, hopefully, we can have a wrap up with Q&A. Okay, now, a few things to keep in mind is that Poly is a private education, as you know, and students are paying lots of money to go to the school there, okay? And also, uh, parents are very involved in their kids' education. As you may notice, there's a lot of campus visits by moms. And so I just want to keep that in mind, okay? When we're there, let's be professionals. Let's be always work on our best. All right, now, uh, limited time, okay? Uh, we have to cover so many stories in a given amount of time, sometimes two classes, sometimes three, and other times four. It depends on the TL. Now. We have so many things to do in such a limited time, such as sometimes uh, taking quizzes. I know I do on, uh, on every Monday. Uh, you check homeworks and vocabulary practice, uh, check their AR log, RA, depends on your campus, okay? So in reality, we don't have a full 45 minutes to give a lesson, but you still have to push through the lessons. Now, not everything's gonna work out to plan. Even though you prepare well, okay, students may not respond to you, so try to have a backup plan. And don't panic if it doesn't work out, because a lot of the times you have to think on your feet anyways. Okay, great. All right, some personal aims. Okay, now in our, my presentation, I want to give you a general overview of reading classes in Poly. I may not have time to go over specifics, but uh, at the end, if you want to email me and ask more questions in depth, I'll be glad to help you. Now, get you familiarized with the TLs. Okay, so in front of you, every, all of you have a TL. We're going to get familiarized with that. Now, I want to share my thoughts and ideas about reading through my experiences. Um, things that have worked for me and sometimes things that haven't worked for me. But I uh, just want to share my knowledge to you. Now, uh, scaffold through reading practices. Uh, strategies through practice. We're going to do a lot of, as you can tell, teamwork, four on four. Okay, whatever. Okay, all right. Some basic teaching tips. Okay, now, <clears throat> I know we're very busy teachers. We don't have a lot of time during classes. But usually what I do... I spend a minute before class, I go to my classroom and I write the objectives, things that the students will be learning for that day. And I find it really makes a difference when the students come in, they're focused, they know exactly what to expect as soon as they walk in. So it does help for the teacher. Okay, also, familiarize yourself with the textbooks. Don't just, uh, and please read the stories before class. Don't just walk in there and wing in and expect things to work out. Because a lot of times kids will have answers, questions, and you may not have the answers right away. So just prepare yourself. Okay, the third thing is make a list of words you anticipate to be problematic for the students. Okay, uh, you make a list so you know what to expect from the kids. Now, I've tried this uh, method and it has helped for me a lot. Okay, I make sticky, sticky notes of questions that I think kids might ask or that questions that could, could come up. So this has helped tremendously. Now, rehearsal. Okay, I know we don't have too much time to rehearse, but just before classes, kind of go through a mental map of what you... Step one, step two, step three, so, something you want to approach in the classroom. Okay. All right, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to examine the TL. So in front of you, you all have a TL right now. What I'd like you to do is just spend a few minutes, just kind of look through it and see what kind of information you can find. Okay, now what you want to do is look at the learning objectives and skills for the month of March. So this should be separated into sections. You should have a, a writing, reading, vocabulary, but just look at the reading one. See what kind of learning objectives the kids are gonna want, are learning. Okay, and the second thing you wanna do is uh, circle the lessons. I believe you're on the third week now, so I believe you're gonna start a new story coming up soon, right? So just look at the GT21, for example. You have a GT2 in front of you, and see what story uh, you'll be learning next. All right, and uh, go ahead and circle it, okay? So, for example, if you see the first lesson, go ahead and circle it with a pen. Circle lesson two, circle lesson three, go ahead and circle lesson four. 
And I would like you to uh, talk with your group or your partner about what you might do, first class, second class, or even third, fourth class. And then when we're done, we'll share it with the class. All right, guys, thank you. Uh, I need your attention again. I see you guys have put a lot of thought into it. I really appreciate it. Okay, now, um, let's go ahead and share with the class some of your ideas. Okay, for example, I kind of gave a hint, but usually the first class, I don't, I don't jump into the story right away. I usually build some, some foundation for them. So I, I said as a hint, uh, pre-reading first class. But anyone would like to share any of their ideas, something you might do in the first class? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, the pictures on the front, mm-hmm. throughout the book, do a picture walk. Picture walk, okay. Um, start to build a discussion of what do you think this story is about, what okay. the title is, um, what the human guess the story is about, what the characters, okay. um, kind of get a setting place, then a move for the story. Okay, kind of great. And talking and discussing. Yes. Did they recognize anything about the story? And things like that. Just get them okay. talking, get them Great, great. I like that you said that. Okay, how about this group? Any ideas on this side? What would you do in the first class? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay go over the vocabulary before you jump in. Because a lot of the times in the books, you'll have the guided or the target language that they have to know, right? Very good. All right, uh, any ideas on the second class? What would you do in the second class? Yes, sir. Okay, talk about character setting. Okay. Okay, good, good. Any other ideas? I think we're going to do a picture walk on the second day. Oh, picture walk second day, okay. Okay, okay. Um, usually, I, um, depending on how far into the story, like if it's an older age level, sometimes you don't get through a full story mm-hmm. in the class, it just depends. Yeah. I don't like to bombard them with straight on reading. Yeah. So I like to do a review of what we've already written in the okay. story. Um, so kind of do a summary, like depending on how far Okay, the story. right. Okay, great. Now, uh, when most of you jump into this, to the reading in the second class, would you go ahead and start? Okay, usually, uh, usually I build background in my first class, but I jump into it right in the second class. 
But yeah, uh, depending on how long the story is, you're not going to really have time to read the entire thing in one class. I usually, I usually break it down. I usually do this amount of pages this day or this amount of pages this day. Okay, great. Now, it depends on, like I said, depends on <clears throat> how many days you have to cover a story. Okay, now for the lower kids, you usually have four classes, five classes. But with the upper kids, not a lot of time. Maybe three classes, sometimes two for the upper grades. But um, any ideas on the third or fourth lesson? Yes, ma'am. Sometimes ma we're reading the story, but asking them to like, practice a certain fluency technique, like mm -hmm. my voice goes up during the question, uh -huh. or explanation points, okay. like reading with like, you know, enthusiasm. Okay, all right, great. Okay, so extended activities. Thank you. I like how you said that because uh, usually by the third lesson, I have already read all the story for the kids. And then I jump into some kind of activity that connects with the reading. Okay, those are great ideas. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and move on. Now, I'm going to start with a very, very general question. The words are very easy, but it's hard to define, right? Now, to you, what is reading? Go ahead and feel free to share your ideas. Okay, what is reading? Yes, ma'am. Okay, decoding. Okay, oh, good. <laughs> comprehension. Okay, I, you nailed it from that, from the reading. Now, a lot of the times people think read just means can you read the words. But we know as educators that that's not enough. We want kids to do more, right? Okay, so a more specific question. Okay, uh, what are the most important skills for achieving literacy? Because that's the ultimate goal we want for our kids is to literacy, right? Now, what sort of things do we need to build on for the kids? What kind of skills do they need? Yes, ma'am. Um, like phonics. Like phonics. Oh, okay. You got one of them. Good. Phonics. But we know that depending on the level of the kid, okay, we have to kind of build them. We can't just immerse them to something, right? So what I was going to talk about is actually let's uh, analyze the components of reading because this is a building block for the for the students. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, the five components of reading. The first one, you got it, okay, which is phonics. Okay, decoding words. Can they put letter with the sound? Okay. The second step is phonemic awareness. Okay, now being able to recognize what a sound means. Okay, this is usually just for auditory purposes. Okay, they're not ready yet to read. Okay, and the third step, as we all know, is vocabulary. Okay, knowing that... Letters put together, they create syllables. Syllables create meaning, right? C, A, T, K, A, T, cat. And then they can associate it with a, with a visual. They know that cat stands for something, okay? But the next step is fluency, okay? It's the ability to read from beginning to end, usually with intonation, accuracy, uh, like we were mentioning before, the question mark. Can they, can they uh, rise a tone, right? So can they read with fluency? Okay, it's very important. But... As we know, that's not the only goal we want for our kids, to be able to read the words. Okay? Our ultimate goal is comprehension. Okay? So once the four stages have been achieved, now they're ready for comprehension. Okay? They're able to connect with the text, and they'll be able to ask questions and engage on the story. Okay, now, one hint. Okay, please, be very careful. Okay? Uh, Please stay away from this as much as possible. The do you understand questions? Because a lot of the times, what are kids going to do when you ask that question? Yeah. Just nod their head, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. But you know in reality that they need a lot of help in building some skills. Okay, so ten, we tend to ask this question, but as much as possible, ask other questions. All right. My three hours of reading, okay? All right, so read, 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 remember. And the reason why, okay, uh, I don't just make kids read once. I usually make them read two times, three times, read it at home, come back, because I want them to actually uh, remember what they have read, and then when they come to the classroom, when you ask questions, they can actually engage more, okay? So that's usually what I do for my students. Okay, now we're going to get into the meat of the lesson. This is where actually, uh, uh, before we start the lesson, like we were saying, the first lesson, we want to do pre-reading, okay? So usually the, the skills that the kids have to know, they have to types of genre, background knowledge, story vocabulary, and a particular story, there's going to be some reading skills that the kids have to master for that lesson. All right, now, just a show of hands. Okay, throw out some genres for books. Yes, sir. Science fiction. Other ones. Fantasy, yes. Yes, okay, wow. You guys are English 
majors, I think. Okay, all right, so yes, uh, fiction, nonfiction, realistic fiction, and biography. There's a list of many types of genres that the kids have to know before they read the story. Now, <clears throat> okay, uh, ways to activate prior knowledge. Okay, try to inquire about the topic. Okay, now, um, for example, uh, St. Patrick's Day is coming up. Ask them what they know about it. Okay, try to ask questions about it. Try to engage them to the text. If there's a reading about St. Patrick's Day, go through like a picture walk. Go ahead and, and tell them what do you know about this already. Try to get them interested in the story. Now, asking about personal experiences. Okay, ask them, have you, ever, have you ever been to a St. Patrick's Day parade? What sort of things do you see there? What kind of things do you expect to do there? Okay, so try to get them connected with the story. Okay, all right. Now, uh, expose story vocabulary by doing the following things. I found that this to be effective in my classes. Okay, usually I make a list of the words on the board. So whatever uh, vocabulary they have to know for that lesson, I write them all on the board. Okay, now, I circle common words. No, words that I think most students will understand because we don't want to spend too much time lecturing on words that they know. So circle it. But whenever they come across unfamiliar words, I usually underline it and uh, I usually define it. Okay, all right, we don't, okay, then go through the list, and the ones that they don't know, vehicle. Okay, what is vehicle? And then most of the time, kids, one kid might know, the other ones might not. Okay, so, all right, vehicle. Bus. Bus, car, limousine. Anything that takes you from one place to another. And then, have them form sentences with that word. Okay, all right. Um, okay, my father drives a vehicle. Okay, so they know that it's a noun. They know that they can connect into sentences. All right. Okay, essential reading skills include. Okay, this is just one of many that I um, that I found. But making predictions. Okay, asking them what you think is going to happen next from the clues in the story. Okay, making inferences, taking what they already know, uh, what they gather from the text, and making their own inferences. Okay, so if a kid sees in a book, okay, uh, rain boots, umbrella, kids make the connection. Okay, all right. Whenever people wear rain boots and umbrella, it mu must mean that it's going to rain, so they make the inference. It must be raining, right? Summarizing, okay, I'm very strict about this with my students, okay? When I ask them, summarize the page, a lot of the times kids just repeat the words, or they just read the sentences, I say, no, 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 don't read it to me. In two sentences, tell me the main idea of every page. So summarizing is a very important skill for, for the students. Okay. Okay, strategies while reading. This is where you're actually into probably the second class when you're actually ready to read to the kids. Okay, so one form is model reading. Okay, uh, this is uh, usually effective for building phonemic awareness. A lot of the kids don't have a lot of exposure to English and they're just learning second language. A lot of it is just, uh, just getting familiarized with English. Okay, so usually it's a teacher-led reading. So which means that you read to them, they try to listen and try to comprehend uh, try to pick up on vocabulary words. Okay, the second type is choral reading. This is when kids are actually have been exposed to English for over a while, and they're, it's effective usually for vocabulary acquisition or for fluency. Okay, this is where the teacher uh, first model reads. They read and then have all the kids simultaneously repeat, and then go to the next page. Okay, so uh, you're checking for also when we say fluency intonation. When you rise a word, can they do the same? Okay, so core reading. And the last type is partner reading, okay? Uh, this is very effective for fluency practice and comprehension. At this point, kids have read the story plenty of times. They know the words, they know how to read it. But at this point, you want them to partner read, okay? Read together. So one student reads one paragraph, have the other one read the second paragraph. Have them stop after every page and ask each other, okay, summarize it for me, or tell me what you see, kind of like that. Get, engage them into the reading. As much as possible, teachers stand back. Let them uh, read together. The only time I, I interfere is when I scaffold. If there's a kid struggling, all right, then I just correct. I help them get their way. But as much as possible, I just let them stand back. Okay. Activities to do after reading. Okay. Um, with the lack of time, I'm not going to go into much detail with all of them, but I'll emphasize the ones that I have been found to be very helpful for me. Now, open traits is an activity for mainly lower students. And these are the kids that can express themselves in, in words or can express themselves in writing. But um, usually it's effective when you do model reading. Have them, okay, all right, pick your favorite character in the reading. And in the back, okay, I want you to illustrate what can that person possibly think or what they might be thinking, okay? 
The other type is character map. The same idea, same concept, but for, for middle and upper grades. Uh, typical questions that might come up are, uh, how did the character solve this problem or identify character traits? Have them script it, have them write it. But this is more for, I would say, GT3, GT4s, and up. Okay? My mapping, I think, is effective for all grade levels. Okay? Even though, uh, even grade 5, have them, for example, life cycles, have them branch out and see how many words they can think of connected to the story. And you'll be, you'll be very surprised how many words they actually know. Okay? All right. Think alouds, again, I recommend this for middle to upper grades. Uh, you want them to engage more. You want them to talk as much as possible about the reading. Okay? Possible questions could be, uh, I predict this might happen, or teacher, I'm confused about this. Can you explain it more? Uh, or this reminds me of the time when I went hiking with my dad. Whatever. Okay, you want them to talk. That's the idea of think aloud. All right. Reader theater. Okay. Uh, even though it's, uh, it's highly used with lower kids to middle grades, I actually recommend it for all grades. Okay, even with the GT4, GT5s, a lot of the times kids get bored by sitting down the entire class. They want to get up. They want to be active, right? So, um, for example, one of the stories that I have read, we have finished the story, and I said, okay, I want you to recreate an, a, an alternate ending. Change the ending, and I want you and your groups to uh, script out a different ending. I want you to come to the front of the class and act it out. Okay, so some, some of the things you can do. Again, reader response is the same concept, usually for upper grades. It's more like an oral book report. Have them discuss it in class. Talk about your first thought about this book. Now, how do you think after that? Okay, so this is just one of many strategies that you can use. All right, I'm tired, but okay, maybe this will help you wake up. So, please so work one, together. One thing real quickly. Yes. Got out, but that's not really weird. So, page one. Then it goes to page two, three, like all the things. Yeah, sorry about that. If you go back the other way, it's going to go the opposite direction. So just be aware that you're not. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, guys, so I'll give you about six minutes to practice. Okay, go ahead and begin. don't have to, just for like kind of get a flow for it, and then uh, if you want to, you may, but also uh, keep, you can practice core reading too, you can change stories, you can do the core reading exercise, okay. Okay. <laughs>
Right, so you want to do um, partner reading. So like, one person read one paragraph and then you alternate, then stop after every page, maybe ask each other questions about what the text is. Sometimes mixed up. Sorry about that. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, I need your attention again. All right, very good. Okay, so you kind of had a feel for how it works. Okay, I, I really appreciate your participation on this. All right, now, which of these do you think uh, kids would really enjoy most? Partner reading, right. I feel like kids get a sense of responsibility. They're accountable for their own reading. Okay, very good. All right, now, <clears throat> this is going to lead to the burning question of this lesson, which is, how do you differentiate comprehension questions? Okay, now we talked about, okay, fluency most of the time, but we haven't really touched on comprehension. But how do we separate? Are all the questions the same? The same, okay, so basically, we need to separate them. So, are, for example... Are all the questions the same level? No. no, we definitely do not. Now, we want to help challenge our students to think in a higher, uh, thinking critically stage, okay? So I'm gonna choose the Bloom Taxonomy. Okay, so um, there are five stages of the Bloom Taxonomy. Stage one is the knowledge stage, okay? Uh, followed by the comprehension stage, analysis, synthesis, and finally evaluation, okay? This is probably gonna be the hardest one to achieve, even for native speakers like us, okay? All right, but uh, the first stage is knowledge. Okay, it just basically means memorizing vocabulary, recalling information, and remembering facts. That's all it is, okay? Now, type of questions you might encounter. Think, kind of question is, who are the main characters or where does this take place, right? So if you're talking click, clack, move, very story we just read, okay, very quickly. All right, who are the main characters in click, clack, move? Farmer. Farmer and... Cows. Okay, right. So, where did the story take place? Okay, right. So, very simple questions that I think all kids can be able to answer, okay? So, they're in the knowledge stage of reading, but uh, I think most of them are at this stage or they're struggling to achieve this stage. This is where they're able to actually describe things in their own words, paraphrase it, uh, organize facts or ideas, okay? Some questions you might ask is, how did this happen? Or why does it happen? Can you name examples from the text? Okay, so this is not just memorization. This is actually like, they read it and they can pick information for themselves. All right? All right, this third stage is analysis. Okay, uh, this 
requires students to do more problem solving, uh, separate whole, uh, holes into components, okay? Now, type of questions that you could encounter, okay? Uh, for example, uh, if this part of the story changes, what would happen? So you want them to actually uh, think in more hypothetically, right? Okay, now, uh, how does this compare or contrast with, okay? Comparing how are things alike, contrasting, how are they different? But the two stories, Serious Farm and Click Clack Moo, let's do that. So how does Click Clack Moo compare with Serious Farm? So we're looking, so how, how are the two stories alike? They both take place on a farm. Okay, now let's contrast the two. So how's, how does Click Clack Moo contrast with Serious Farm? How are the two different? Oh, you didn't get that far? <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, uh, if you read Sears Farm, okay, obviously we would say the characters are different. Uh, in Sears Farm, um, okay, cows are not typing, right? So this type of things kids will say. All right. Now, uh, how are the two related, in other words? Okay, so the relationship between the two stories, okay? <coughs> now, synthesis, okay, it's getting increasingly more difficult for students. This is rational. They're able to combine their ideas and form new ones. We want them to create their own work based on the text. So, for example, okay, uh, prediction questions. What would you predict from reading this? So you read the fin we re we finished reading the story, as in click, like, move, right? We saw, we saw the ducks come out, right? What do you, what do you predict is going to happen next? Have them talk about that. All right? Uh, or what might happen if you change this, sp this part of the story? If you change one detail of the story, what might happen next? Or, uh, what solutions can you offer for this? Okay, the uh, problem, plot, things like that we're going to see, right? So if you say, okay, if you change this part of the story, how is that going to change the entire story? And that's what we want kids to think, more abstractly. And the final stage, where, sorry. <laughs> All right, and the final stage that we want them to achieve is evaluation. Okay, this is um, where they're actually able to make judgments and make evaluations of the text. Okay. Now, type of questions we might see. Uh, do you agree with the main character's decision to do this? Okay, so you want them to have more open discussion with the, with the stories. Okay, now what do you think is the most important uh, part of the story? And then have them talk about it. So they're evaluating the text. They're, they're assessing it. Okay, now these are the five stages of Bloom Taxonomy. Now we're going to move into our final project. Okay, all right. Now, uh, we're going to put everything we have gathered today, we're going to put it together, okay? We're going to make a four-day lesson plan with the story, Jamaica Louise James. Okay, all right, so uh, you're going to decide what you're going to do in the first class, second class, third class, and finally the fourth class. Uh, I want you to identify target language, okay? Types of vocabulary you will introduce for every lesson. I want you to um, tell them, expose them to new vocabulary. Now, the third task is try to think of five questions. Uh, one for each level of Bloom Taxonomy. Now, I want to emphasize one thing. Okay, and maybe all five questions may not be possible or attainable for, for the given stories. Okay? You're going to have to make the decisions on your own. Um, some of the stories, you may be able to do evaluation, but some you may not. But I would like you to work in your groups, just like we did before. I want you to create a, a four-day lesson plan and think of possible questions you can ask the students. Okay. Go ahead and start. Sure. The, uh, the boom taxonomy question? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, these will be for evaluation. Okay. Uh, 
Actually, I'm, let me go back to, to knowledge. Okay. Okay, so. okay so, so which level do you want me to... Uh, okay, all right. I got the laser if you need it. <laughs> Kind of the skills we want them to achieve. Sure. Uh, the questions for analysis? Sure. Or you can just make a list of like words in the reading you think might be difficult for the students. Yeah. Okay, guys, um, give you plenty of time, hopefully. Okay, all right. Um, now that we have created uh, a lesson plan for four days, I'd like you just to share some of your ideas with, with the rest of the class. So, for example, what would you do in the first, in the first day of, of the reading? Any ideas? Don't be shy. Sure, sure. Right. Picture walk. Great. Okay. Good job. 
All right, uh, how about this group? you want to share your first day ideas? Family, art, okay. All right, so background knowledge. Okay, so you're building to the story. Good job. Okay, what about the second day? Would you jump into the story the second day? Okay, great. Okay. Okay. So, uh -huh. okay, great. All right, now what about uh, third in the last, third and fourth lesson, okay? Now, let's assume that, okay, the students have read all of the story and they understand the words, they understand the questions, okay, what would you do as, a, for example, an extension of the reading? What, what, what kind of ideas do you have? First, second, third, okay, sequence chart. Okay, great. Other ideas, okay. Yeah, since the theme is about mm -hmm. art, maybe you want to have them create their own, their own art. Like, uh, have them, okay, what do you see outside your window? Okay, why don't you draw it? Sort of like that, right? So you want to actually connect to the story. Okay, very good job. Okay, you are a very good guest. I know you guys are tired, but you guys put a lot of effort into it. I really appreciate it. Now, we're going to wrap this up with... Any Q and A's, all right? Um, if there's a certain thing in the presentation that you want me to clarify more, please feel free to email me. I check my email every day. Uh, contact me, feel free. And then please share your ideas, because I know you guys are excellent reading teachers. So, okay, let's, let's keep the wealth, okay? All right, um, if you don't have any questions, then we're gonna, do, uh, we're gonna do a survey, I guess, a questionnaire. All right, and then that's it. That wraps up the lesson. Thank you for being a good audience.